Okay. I'm giving a talk about compliance and how it's awesome. And it's, uh, that's how I opened the talk. And then it's really good that, like, the Hash Days guys got me out here. Even though I know this is going to be relatively worthless because I'm hungover. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't, it doesn't mute the point that the compliance sucks. It just makes me suck as a person. But, you know, I also appreciate you guys sitting here and watching my st stupid PowerPoint stuff. Um, I'm Chris. If anybody doesn't know me, that's me in various different sizes and shapes and formats. Um, does this have the laser shit on it? That's my favorite one. That's, I gave a talk about picking up chicks and I decided to have a makeup artist turn me into like a 500 pound dude because I thought it was funny to talk about picking up chicks when I was a really huge dude. Um, it took like seven hours before my talk to like get all that stuff made up and like my arms and everything. I mean, it was, it was a crazy process because we use some of these guys when we want to beat like facial recognition systems and we'll have them like put us in makeup for a while and construct jaw lines and contacts and stuff like that. Um, but I'm not going to talk about any of that cool stuff. <laughs> so there. <laughs> Uh, that's me getting drunk in Hawaii. That's me getting drunk at home. That's me drunk buying skis. That's me drunk on Halloween. That's, that's me drunk at somebody's wedding. That's me drunk taking photos for a stupid TV show that sucked. <laughs> uh, my credentials. Yeah, it's, there you go. There's me. That's, that's what qualifications I have to give this talk. <laughs> it's pretty much that. Um, those are probably closer to what people think my credentials are, or who I am, I guess. Um, I have one of those. Anybody have one of those? <laughs> Screw you, I get paid more. <laughs> 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 You're the idiot, not me. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, you want me to buy you another drink? Yeah. Huh, wonder why. Well. Because I know how to search Google Images, and I could change all that shit to say Chris Nickerson. Um, it was a trick, because I thought I was going to get a really nice lock, because um, I enjoy picking. And that's a CISA lock. Um, but instead, they gave me this crappy piece of paper, which I thought was a total ripoff. Um, I got one of those, too. So did William Slater. I don't know who that is or why a high-resolution picture of his CISSP is just hanging out on the internet, but whatever, man. He's a CISSP. He could do it, right? I have a whole bunch of other crappy certifications and experience and stuff, but it totally doesn't matter. I, don't, I mean, it like, literally doesn't matter, and all of you are the boo thing. Yeah, right on. Doesn't matter. Um, if you don't like it, you don't like my attitude about it, I don't care. You control me. I'm fine with that, because um, that's really funny. <laughs> uh, I I this isn't going to be any type of like hacking talk, right? I'm not going to give you like tech tips. So if you want that, just leave, because this will suck if you want that. I, I know that's, that's FX, I do that for you just to set the stage to make sure we're on the same thing. Like, just have a drink and ignore me for a little while. <laughs> um, I'm not going to talk about O'Day. I'm not going to talk about how cool phones are <laughs> or how you can dial them to get shit. I'm not going to talk about awesome web apps because those are so crazy and complex. Or phones, because everybody talks about that stuff, right? I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. Um, sorry. Right. It's a compliance talk, right? And they suck, so I'm trying to make it suck less, but it's going to suck anyway. Um, so why did I fly here to give some crazy talk about compliance? Um, cause to me, compliance isn't, it isn't about anything other than just human nature, right? Like we just, 
we get into these situations and we don't know what to do. We don't have any idea what to do. And we, it's, just, it's just basic human nature, right? Because we have this problem called communicating. And all of you hang out in mom's basement and don't talk to people. That's part of the issue, right? <laughs> or the ones that are like, oh, I'm not going to give a talk because I freak out because I'm in front of people. Just look at me. I look like shit. I'm still talking. It's fine, right? But we have this history of communication, right? And, it, and it's caused all of these problems. As soon as you open your mouth, if anyone, anyone married, you know that as soon as you open your mouth, you're screwed. Like, everything you do is wrong. It just, all you have to do is say hi. And, and if it's the wrong day, you just get owned, right? You just get totally owned. And it doesn't matter. You, they just own you for no reason, because they can, right? And, and so this communication causes these huge problems in our existence. So we go from like caveman style communication. She looks absolutely retarded, doesn't she? It's awesome. She's like, screw you, kid. <laughs> to like really high tech communication, which this is the most ridiculous network diagram I've seen. <laughs> I was looking on Rate My Diagram earlier and I was like, I don't even know what that means. I have to, maybe someone knows this. I don't know what that is. But it has little red crosses, so maybe it's Swiss. Um, but look, this communication thing, right? Like, like anything that's new to us, it's completely, completely scary. <laughs> right? Like it freaks us out because we know we're going to get owned as soon as we open up our mouth. There's no, there's no option other than failure because success won't even be derived. Right? Like the only thing we're going to feel is when it hurts and then good is just good. Does that make sense? Right? So... So in order to feel safe and, and try and like stop the bad from happening, right? We make all these rules. And we, we try and make these rules so that we can keep this communication that we have going without having the bad influence us, right? We don't want the bad, so we make some rules and we're like, hey, if you make these rules, less bad will happen, which is crazy for all of us that have been arrested, because <laughs> I was having a blast until I got arrested. <laughs> but, you know, we, we make these things and we, and we try and make guidelines. Anyone heard of a guideline? Right, so it's not a rule, it's a guideline. It's just a line that you're kind of supposed to follow. Yet, when I'm doing my DUI test and I don't follow the line, <laughs> I get arrested. So then we make a standard because guidelines are just, they're not really forceful enough. It's just like a suggestion, right? It's a, all right, you should do it this way, but if you don't, that's okay. Then we make it personal, right? Like we actually make you feel bad for not walking on the line. They're like, it's a standard. It's what everyone else does. You're just obviously not as good as everyone else, the standard way of doing it. So, you know, go home, enjoy your little cry on your own, and, and recognize that you're not as good as everyone else. But, but even that doesn't have enough teeth. So, we make a best practice, right? Because you're like, well, you know, I don't have to do it every, every way other people do it. My way's better. But if you don't do the best way, again, you're just an incompetent fool. You're just one of the people who doesn't follow best practice, which means you are not the best, and whatever you're doing sucks. Because it's not number one. And if you're not number one, you're, you're nothing else. You're just, you're just not winning. Right? But people couldn't even figure this out, the whole best practice thing. Even when we attacked them personally and said that you can't comply to a level that, that meets other people's expectations, even when we told them that the best people out there, you're, you're nowhere near, they still wouldn't do it. So we made this thing called compliance, right? This is a forced standard. You have to do this. If you don't do this, you don't do this thing that we're telling you to do, even though we know nothing about you, like we don't 
care who you are or any or what business you're in or any, none of that matters. You just have to do what I tell you. So, you know, that picture's awesome. And it's the best compliance picture I've found. So the rest of them won't meet up to that. But do you know what, what the first compliance infraction was? Anyone? History? I have toys, like stuff to give away here. I'll give something away so it'll make it like a prize. Uh, I'm all, you can have a laptop. How about a sticker? All right, spontaneously combustible sticker. Can you guess what the first compliance infraction was? Pretty close. Yeah? Oh, look. This is yours. Um, I'll give it to you later. So, <laughs> this is a compliance infraction. That's what this is. There was a set of rules and standards made. Someone broke those rules, which, I mean, with her, if there was no one else around, I'd probably break them too. Um, <laughs> there's only two of us. Uh, but there was a penalty that was put on that. Now, I don't care what religion you are, because I don't believe in any of them. Sorry. But, but it's a fact that was written in a book, and since Wikipedia and books are always facts, then, you know, it's real. Um, just like compliance, right? Because it's a fact and it's real and it totally does what it's supposed to do. Um, but from that moment on, we started to use these rules as a way of operating. Okay? We, we made all these rules up and we wanted to create standards not just to communicate, but to live by, in general, everything we do all day long. And I don't, I, you know, I was looking around for like Swiss standards. Is there, are, are there Swiss standards that you have to adhere to? Because I, I'm not smart enough to find them, I guess. But are there? Like things that you have to do? Or is it just the annoying counterparts that you have in the States that tell you you have to do stuff? It's a question. You're supposed to answer me or at least nod or just say F you or something. W what is that? DPA? Okay. And, that, and that, that tells you exactly how to protect your data? Or how to protect data in general. <laughs> kind of like these, where like Sarbanes Oakley teaches you how to protect financial reporting, which has nothing to do with your business at all. It's just financial reporting. Or HIPAA, which teaches you how to protect PHI, which does nothing for taking care of people. Like healthcare industry is supposed to make it so that you're healthy. Or like when you're sick, you get fixed. Not that you're you know, my herpes report can get released, I'm still going to be alive. Or PCI, that's a good one. Anyone had credit card fraud recently, Dale? But <laughs> yeah, right? How's PCI working for you? Awesome, right? It's just, it's, just, it's perfect. See? And it just, it does all this great stuff, right? Because it's there to protect you. What else is there? High tech, those were awesome. High tech's hilarious. I don't know if any of you work in healthcare, but it's really funny. Because it, it says implement controls or you'll have to disclose that the PHI was compromised. How cool is that? You're like, I put a firewall in. I don't have to tell people I got owned. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Give me money. <laughs> and then you have all these other great ones, right? There's all over the place. Um, you even have open source ones that have nothing to do with your business at all. At all. Nothing to do with your business, yet the vain son of a bitch who makes this stuff thinks it's the only way to protect everything. Idiot, you don't even know who you're protecting. He doesn't, does do you, do all of you like know Pete? your best friend, and he knows your business awesome all the way down to how you make every dollar so you protect it appropriately with this garbage? No. Meanwhile, you have this awesome... All right, so off of the compliance problem that we have, then we have this whole industry that's built around compliance, right? You have these vendors, <laughs> right? And all they do is sit around and wonder, how do I get more money out of this idiot? 
that has to apply and comply to these rules that have nothing to do with his business at all. So we'll sell him encryption. That's good. I still have that t-shirt. The best t-shirt ever. Um, encryption, right? Fixes everything. But they're like, shit, we gotta sell more stuff. All right, intrusion detection and prevention. That sounds wicked cool. And I know that we can get that stuff in every piece of compliance because the people who made those rules have no idea what they're talking about. So if we give them something like intrusion prevention, how awesome would that be to put in the standard? Because everyone needs to be preventing intrusion. I mean, sometimes you want a little intrusion, but you should prevent it, right? And data leak prevention, how cool is that? Not only can you prevent people from breaking into you, you can prevent your stuff from leaving. Cool, buy it. Put it as part of the compliance mechanism. Then you get antivirus and anti-malware. <laughs> Gotta have that, because if you don't, you're not compliant, or if you don't, you're just an idiot, yet, if you just didn't do stupid stuff, you wouldn't get viruses. But whatever, let's sell them more crap. Like strong authentication. That's a, dude, there's tons of stuff we could sell. I mean, what, strong auth is like hundreds of millions of dollars that you just dump into? And then somebody goes, ha, ah, password one, click, hey, I got access. And like, but it was accessed strongly. <laughs> just, you did it hard, <laughs> right? And they did it hard to you. And you have integrity checking. That's really great, you know. Uh, it's just, it, it just, it blows my mind. Log management, right? All of these things are in compliance. You have to have these. Now, none of this stuff is actually built for your business or you. It's just random crap people made up for you to buy. <laughs> right? You get that, right? Like, I'm not... That's a fact. People made stuff up and then made some rules and said, oh, you know what we can do? We can make these rules and then make crap for people to buy and then tell them that they have to do these rules and buy our crap. That's, that's the craziest scam I've ever heard of, and it's awesome. It's like a $300 billion market called InfoSec, right? <laughs> and then you have firewalls. The, like, be-all, end-all, like, that's... That stuff will save you. There's whole compliance controls like sets, like PCI that says you have to have a firewall. Why? Why do you have to have a firewall? Like, so what? So because it's gonna stop something? <laughs> Show me any time that a firewall has stopped me on a pen test or any of you guys who are pen testers, I will just be blown away. I'll be, it would just be the magic unicorn riding down from in heaven giving me a goddamn golden egg. Like, it's just ridiculous. It doesn't do anything. It just lets the bad shit through easier. <laughs> All right. So those technologies, right? Let's, let's talk about basic firewalls. They're basic stateful firewalls, right? How many can actually block TCP ports? Yeah, one. One. There's one that does it kind of okay, and even then you can get around it. That sucks. Like, isn't this a problem? Like, doesn't anyone get mad about this? Or you're just like, whatever, dude, I'll just, just pay more money and have the auditor, dude, just, just get deep. Just go. Check stuff off. Put new crap in the rack. Make sure that the performance of my entire network sucks and then blame it all on security. That's ridiculous. So, we're all sad about it, right? Yeah, and, you know, but I have to give it to compliance for a couple things, right? Other than make us sad, it, it has made people aware of risk. Whereas before, they, they just kind of like didn't care, or they cared, but like they really had no reason to talk about it, and we had no reason to go to Switzerland and give talks. So that's cool. Well, I get to go meet new people and like hang out with friends of mine that live in other countries. Awesome, thank you. Um, it gave us teeth. Right? We had some really cool ways 
to force executives to do undumb stuff, and then they do it in a really dumb way just to, like, spite us, <laughs> you know? It's, well, you have to have a nine-character password. They're like, great, A, 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 A. It has to be complex, A, A, capital A, 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 period, you know? And you're like, dude, just spend 10 seconds thinking about it. You know, I'm a doctor. I can't remember a password. What? <laughs> are you serious? You're a doctor. You remember books that are like this big. I don't want you telling me how I'm sick if you can't remember a freaking nine character password. You're an idiot. <laughs> it made money rain from the sky, right? <laughs> like, you just think about something, and if you call it compliance, money just goes and like, come, it just falls from heaven. It's, that's awesome. But, you know, so it's awesome, right? It's like, yay, thank you, compliance. But it's done some other cool stuff for us. It's completely misdirected our funding and goals. Anyone have this problem? The 80% problem? Those are made-up statistics. The statistics don't matter, <laughs> right? 80% of the budget is spent on less than 5% of the environment because of compliance. Because people go, oh man, I can make it rain money, but only for compliance. So how do I do this? All right, I'm gonna get $5 million, and I'm gonna apply all $5 million to this host that stores my credit cards. Now, I'm an auto manufacturer. <laughs> but I have to be compliant with this stuff. And look, who cares if people are hacking our SCADA systems and turning on torches that weld shit and just making them chase people around the plant? Who that doesn't matter. We'll spend the money on the credit cards because that's what we're supposed to do, <laughs> right? Like, isn't that ridiculous? Isn't it ridiculous that, well, okay, we should protect the patient data. Why is the heat on in the operating room? They're like, well, there's this HVAC controller and people hack it and turn the heat on because they think it's funny. <laughs> Shouldn't we stop that because the dude's dying? They're like, but his patient information's just fine. A little box, no one's getting to it. He's dead as hell. He's dead. Doesn't matter. He's not going to sue us. He's dead. <laughs> We can release this shit right now. <laughs> so it's just, it's just so misdirected, and it's created this lemon market for us, right? And uh, have any of you studied like lemon markets in finance? All right, so in the 70s, uh, coin term of lemon markets, the, the main indicator of a lemon market, right, is where the buyer has a disproportionate level of knowledge of that market than the seller, okay? So me as the buyer, I don't know half of the crap that the seller's talking about. Because the seller's an expert in the market and I'm just trying to buy stuff, right? Like, I'm not a real good wrench on cars. I can fix motorcycles here and there. But I'm, I'm just not that good with cars. Concepts apply, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know the intricacies of cars as well. So when I go to a car dealership and somebody starts just blah, 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 just puking out crap, the only thing I could do is like straight Google and be like, you're lying because Google said you lied, right? But other than that, I have no indicators. So they create indicators for you, right? Anyone have a warranty on their car? It means nothing. It's an indicator in order to bring you up to a level of comfort to identify that this product is better than another product, even though it's completely fictitious. It's a psychological trick in order to bring you up to a level of assuredness that the product that you're buying is the right product. Anyone see those things happen in security? Anyone have flyers for their crap? Sweet logos? You know, giveaways? Anyone get an iPad recently? You know, like, these are all indicators. They have nothing to do with the quality of the product at all. It's marketing crap. And compliance has driven this lemon market so deeply into security that we cannot recover from it. So it gives us someone to blame, which is kind of good, right? 
How come this box got hacked? Well, I was doing the PCI stuff. Yeah, but why did this box get hacked? I don't know. I was following these rules, which say protect this stuff, and that box wasn't in this set of rules, so it's not my fault. Maybe if you wrote the compliance rules better, that box wouldn't have got hacked. Again, totally ridiculous. Right? It makes us urgent, forces ours to look at things that are urgent and unimportant. If our business is to make cars, who gives a shit about the credit cards? It's not a car. Make the car. That's your job. You're a doctor. Fix the person who's bleeding. Fix them. You're, I mean, whatever it is, you do services. You're freaking masseuse. Give somebody a back rub. Don't worry about their stuff. Do your job. And if you do your job securely, you're actually going to make a difference. If you do it like shit, you do it like shit. You'll go out of business. Great. I hope you do. So this is what I have to say to compliance, not thank you. Um, so why doesn't this stuff work? Why haven't, why haven't these like make-believe rules worked for us, right? So first off, it's completely inefficient, right? We have a canvas. It's this big. I have a canvas that's this big. And I have to draw a circle that's that big. You have a canvas that's this big, and you have to draw the same size circle on your canvas. And then you have one that's a wall big, and you have to draw the same size circle. It's, it's absolutely absurd to think that a standard is going to fit the unique nature of each business because it is unpredictable. Does anyone know their business? Oh, you know your business? You know it? You're the CEO? Yes? You are? No, you, smiling, nodding. Yeah? You're the CEO. You know your business. You are the CEO. Who are you? What do you do? So you think you know the business? You do? What kind of business are you in? Uh-huh. And so your security program protects the watches? What does it protect? Right? So, so your whole security program is focused on protecting the, that? Or do you have standards and stuff that you have to follow? Okay. Do you think most businesses are like that? Why? I mean, it takes a couple questions, right? You need to go, oh, I work for a watchmaker. So what should we do? We should protect the watch stuff. Anything that has to do with making watches, we should probably protect that and the other stuff we can get to at some point. But most people don't do that, right? Because they have their sights set on compliance. Because they, they, this urgent and unimportant thing that's directly in front of them, constantly nagging them, constantly pushing them around so that they can stick their head in the sand and just ignore it. Because at the end of the day, they comply. And compliance is awesome, because criminals want us to comply. Because as soon as we comply, we know that we have a template. It's like giving your defense in a football game to the other group. They know all of your formations. They know how you're going to move it down the field. They know how that you're going to score. They know exactly what you're going to do if they're moving to the left or to the right. So they can just go, oh, well, here's all the flaws. Thank you for showing me. I can attack you this way. And what's even cooler is, let's say there's one flaw that you find in a company that's PCI compliant. Do you think that that flaw will work on every other compliant PCI company? Sure. Because they're doing it the same way. They have to. Again, crazy. Right? Criminals do it right. Right? You have this, this market, the drug market, $400 billion, but you have our market, which is way better. <laughs> Like, we make them suck, 
Like, drugs have been around forever. We just own stuff and make tons of money. Right? Because this is what we're doing to compliance. <laughs> All right? This is what's up with compliance right now, is that people are just beating the crap out of anybody who's compliant. And it's awesome. You're in the news. Pfft, I bet you were compliant at some point. Because it's that much easier to attack you. Because you're too focused on this little piece of paper. Okay. That's confusing. So what do we do? Like, if we can't follow compliance, what do you do? And I think that's, that's been one of those problems that people have a really hard time tackling. And, and I'm going to say some stuff, and you're going to go, oh, that's stupid, I know that. But I'm telling you, businesses don't operate this way. I mean, I'm a consultant. I see a lot of the Fortune 1000 like the world global Fortune 1000, and most of them don't do it, right? Most of them don't actually protect what matters most to the business. They protect your InfoSec team's vanity. Thank you, Tim, for helping me think about that today. They protect vanity. You think you know so you build a program around what you think you know without ever asking a question? That is the most vain thing ever. Oh, I know the business. Really? You started it? You know every piece of the business? Well, I'm in a Fortune 50 company, of course. <laughs> if you're in a Fortune 50 company, you don't know a damn thing about the company. You know your little tiny piece, and that's about it, and even then you probably don't know your piece very well. So what do, what do companies care about, right? What, how, how, what, what do most of them care about? They care about their product line. Now, whether you're a service company or whether you're a, a manufacturing company or you make widgets or you provide care or whatever else, right? That's your product. Every business has a product, yeah? And you care about your product. It's what makes you your money. You care about the brand because if you suck or people say that you suck, you're not going to keep making money. Employees, anybody care about their employees? You should care about your employees because they're awesome. <laughs> Most people don't care about their employees because they think that they can be replaced. And, and you know what? Even if you could replace your employees, think about it this way. My entire manufacturing factory was firebombed and everyone's dead. <laughs> Can I make money? Well, I don't have any employees. Okay, that's going to take you some time to backfill that stuff. So you really have to compensate for those things. Right? They may be expendable or replaceable, but it ha it's so important to your business that they exist that they need to be part of that protection program. You care about the bottom line. I mean, if you're making money, and then you go to the bank account and you don't have any left, you're in a lot of trouble. Because then you're not going to have any employees because you're not going to pay them and they're going to bounce. Do any of these things exist in compliance, by the way? Any of these concepts? No? Then what the... F Sorry. <laughs> what? what the hell's the point? Okay. So how do we... How do you actually do this, right? Because it's all, oh, it's theoretical. It's not. It's really easy. Shut up. Stop. Your opinions don't matter at all. They, it, for the most part, m most of us are not in a position that matter. As much as we want to bloat and hold our sack and tell ourselves how important we are, we're not important, dude. We just aren't. And if you're in a big company, you're even less important because <laughs> they don't care. They're just there because you're supposed to be there, <laughs> right? So make it work. Like, really make it work. Do something. Ask them questions. Become part of the business. Start thinking like them. And if you don't know how to think like them, oh, by the way, if you think you can think like them, you're doing it wrong right now. Unless you've asked them exactly how they think about everything, you don't know them. You have to accept that. You don't know shit about them. So, oh, well, I think the CEO would like this. Did you ask him? No, I just know that he would like that. 
wrong. You are wrong as wrong gets until you ask him. And then if your answer is the same, great. You were right only after that. Until then, dead wrong. And then you have to do work. Crazy. Yeah, it is, no, you just can't just plug shit in and sit back at your desk and farm artichokes. Yeah, I mean, you have to do work. You have to focus on what's going on in the business. You have to figure out how the business runs and who's in charge. You have to be able to understand what your products are and how does any of your testing actually do things with your product set and your brand. Anyone know their company's mission statement? Two people? You all suck at your jobs. Fact. Everything you're doing doesn't apply to your company because that mission statement is the summary of what that company is. And if you don't know it, and everything that you do every day to support it, you are not doing your job. Sorry, call me a jerk, kick me out of the country. Pfft, don't care. Right? But you're just not. Supporting PCI and compliance, there's no one's... No one's company is like, we're going to be the most PCI compliant car manufacturer in the world. <laughs> there isn't one of those. There, is, there isn't, I mean, you can make one and just to prove me wrong, be a jerk. But you'll go out of business and I'll laugh at you anyway. Be like, ha ha, you suck. <laughs> Bad mission statement. But really, I mean, I'm joking about it, but I'm not. Because if you're not doing things to protect that mission statement and how the company operates and what it does and how it does it and that unique image that it has, you're not doing anything. You're just putting shit in a rack. Where does the money come from? Does anyone know where the money comes from? They're like, yeah, Visa. No, it doesn't come from Visa. Visa doesn't do anything. They don't own money. All they own is a loco. Like, how screwed up is that? We have to apply a protection standard on a business that doesn't exist more than one little logo on a thing that a bank owns and a processor transfers the money from and that you put money into. Visa's like a little logo and they're the one telling you how to protect your company? If I want to know how to protect a logo, I'll talk to them. Everything else, they can eat it. So not only that, you have to think about attacks. Okay? If you're thinking like them, and you find out these things in the business, and you know what the mission statement is, how can you attack your mission statement? If my job is to build the highest grade pharmaceutical Colombian cocaine manufacturer in the world, which probably is, how do I do it? Well, if I pollute it, then I'm not going to have my mission statement. If I'm going to make great cars and I make them turn out like crap because I change all the formats in the SCADA controllers, I've now affected the business. Who cares if I owned XYZ Box or whatever else? None of those matter at all. It matters if you can hurt the company. All right, competitors, competitors want to hurt you. That's their job. Your money that's in your pocket should be in theirs. So they're doing everything they can to take it out of your pocket and put it in theirs. Now we can go through this CISSP stupidness and take these dumb domains and apply them to stuff and just suck again. Or we can actually look at it somewhat intelligently. And we can take generic concepts that all of these management people know about and they're big words so they make you sound totally smart, right? Confidentiality. Look at all the syllables. And you can make criticality, and when they hear things are critical, they get all like perky and excited. And then you talk to them. You have an interview with them, and you say, hey guys, look, I just want to know what's important to you. Anyone have a conversation with management and says, hey, what's important to you? Or you just assume you know? But ask them. It's a, it's a fun conversation. You get to hear crazy shit that you would never hear otherwise. You don't even know your company does that stuff. And they're like, man, this one thing freaks me out. That's, my, that's what I do all day. And then you can start ranking it. Because when they rank it, 
right? This isn't Nessus. This is feeling mode. This is their feelings. Security is a feeling. And if they think this is high in their feeling area and you protect their feelings, imagine the support you're going to get. It's like giving somebody a hug when they need it or just having Dave around, right? It's just, it's, it's unbelievable the protection that you get in a program like that because you're protecting the business's feelings. Anyone protect the business's feelings? Two people, the hugs, right? And you protect your customers' feelings. That's the big problem that most people don't have is you have to weight these things, and sometimes they're wrong, right? Sometimes you're like, wow, look, okay, forget it. This is actually a high, and this one's actually a low. Because once you talk them down the ledge of like, marketing materials, a medium, really? You're like, but isn't that the shit you give people? And they're like, ah, oh, that's true, but, <laughs> but it's important because I don't want somebody else to see it. And be like, all right, but let's talk about availability of it or maybe the integrity of it because I don't want you to put like racist jokes in it as a funny ha or whatever. But you can work this out with them and you get to have conversations that you would never have about the business. Not how many Nessus fives or nines or whatever the hell it spits out. Who cares about all that crap? Executives don't care. Does this make sense? And you can score this stuff and even do like little mathy things that totally don't matter, but people like to see math stuff. You know? Do your little cool math stuff and then say this. You want to protect a five? Cool. It's a little tiny set of things that are a five. So anything that holds patient data, it's a five. We're going to protect it. Costs this much money. They're like, well, we want to protect everything. Oh, so you want to protect down to one. Well. All of these and all of these systems are going to cost this much money. And they go, ah, oh, let's protect a four because I don't want to spend that crazy amount. OK, fine. Four is this many systems, this much stuff, this much money. And they go, let's protect five today. And then we'll protect four at some point, And we'll just work on it. And you're like, cool. Now, amazingly enough, you've actually protected the business instead of just trying to apply rules to protect everything, which is Absolutely ridiculous. This is stupid, right? I mean, you could say yes. It's, it's just dumb easy, right? But I don't know why people don't do it. They're too busy reading rules and regs and getting check marks. OK, it's wicked boring. I got it. So we're lost. We live in darkness. There's a bunch of hackers that get all this money, buy all these kick-ass cars, and it's unfair and it sucks. <laughs> And eh, it just sucks, and it's unfair. And the, the problem is so much more about our perception than anything else. Because you know what we expect our users to do? We expect our users to clean up their own shit. This is what we expect of all of our users. They're like, oh, you took a dump because you're a dog? Great, clean that shit up, throw it away. You're like, I'm a dog, dude. I clean that up. I put that there on purpose. <laughs> That's my shit, literally. I'm not moving that. You, you mess with it. You're the one who has to be clean. I think that's fine. I eat the same thing every day. That's good. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that picture, right? So my, my statement that I learned from this conference is that information security programs our physical manifestation of our own vanity. Our programs that we write down in compliance, specifically, is a manifestation of the vanity of those who created it. It has nothing to do with your business or program or your life. It has to do with someone going like this, writing it down on the paper, I mean, like, you gotta do that. I don't know anything about you, but you have to do it anyway. And we are just getting our ass beat because of that. So because we're in Europe, I started at step zero. And I'm only going to go to step zero. We need to think of things correctly. Like this is deception, not this. That's not deception. <laughs> There's no trick, <laughs> OK? <laughs> that dude's a rapist. 
bam, proof. <laughs> like, that is not tricky. Don't teach people that this is a trick. Right? You want to fight a war? Fight it with this. Don't fight it with that. Castles will get bombed by these dudes. Also a fact. Right? A anyone in here ever been hacked? Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know there's plenty of papers that show all my creds and shit. Like, you can look it up. <laughs> I got owned. Anyone else? You don't have the balls to say it? It's cool. You got it, yeah. Anyone had a virus? All right, how about that? Anyone had a virus? Yay. Anyone been hacked? Yay. We learned something today is that we have all been hacked. I don't know why I was so hard. Why is, it, why is it easy to go, yeah, man, I had mad viruses, but I've never been hacked. <laughs> huh? Do you recognize that your security controls were compromised and stuff was installed on your machine that wasn't supposed to be? And they're like, yeah, it's a virus. You're like, oh, you got owned. You're not Magic Johnson. You can't just pay for the AIDS to go away. <laughs> um. I'm just leaving with this. I'm done. That is my favorite quote from Doctor Who. Is, and, and really what that's about to me is we keep trying to do this overly complex, highly technical stuff when the easy solutions will work. We're just afraid of doing the work. That's it. That's all I'm talking about. I'm done ranting. I'm going to go puke and have my hangover. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any questions. I didn't really say anything. No? Okay. In the words of FX, let's get drunk. <laughs> <laughs>